about famous aviators, female, um, Amelia Eckhart, for instance. Amy Johnson isn't written into history in the same kind of way. Uh, can you tell us a bit about her and why she's such an inspiration to you? Um, Amy was unusual in the sense that she came from a sort of middle-class background. The women that were flying in that interwar period, particularly in Britain, came from a very privileged background. So you have a lot of titled women learning to fly. And of course it was rather lovely because it had all been kicked off by Lindbergh flying the Atlantic in 1927. And it became almost, dare I say it, a fashion. Really? So suddenly people wanted to learn to fly and it was new, it was exciting. And against that background of privilege, you have this very interesting individual emerging from the north of England. You know, she was born in Hull. Uh, the family obviously attached quite a high value to education because unusually she went to university, so she was bright. So it was quite liberated in that respect. But she was the eldest of four sisters. And it was, I suppose, something of her personal history that, that really resonates with me. You know, she came and worked in London. She was flatting with friends. She worked at Peter Jones. She was on a management course there and, and really couldn't quite find her, her raison d'etre in life. But the background, I think, to her flying, and particularly to her flight to Australia, was this broken love affair, a six-year, passionate, consummated love affair and she wanted to marry this chap. He was Swiss, uh, he worked up in the north of England. He was a sort of, you know, he was like a, a, a broker in the fishing industry, so she met him through family connections. And she really wanted to marry him. She met his family in Switzerland, and he certainly led her to believe that that would be the outcome. But in the end, he sort of, he drops her, and, you know, has got, in fact, already met somebody else, has got them pregnant, and ended up marrying this other, this other, this other girl. And it was, I think, absolutely catastrophic for Amy. And you can't underestimate the importance of that in her life, this shocking betrayal and this sense of total loss and devastation in her life. And in that vacuum, she finds flying. And she, she jumps in on this one, boots and all, because she's a very, I mean, her single-mindedness is almost masculine in how she did this. So suddenly she just, you know, and I think she was almost trying to save herself. She knew she was in a very bad place and I think was suicidal. I mean, she was acutely depressed, but in parallel with her flying because she wasn't really very good. And to read the sort As of- As in she wasn't a good pilot? No, she, well, it was difficult for her. You know, it, you get into these machines and you, you know, just flying an open cockpit, it's a, it's a very hostile environment. It's noisy, it's, there's a lot of engine vibration. You can smell oil and fuel. She couldn't see properly because her seat wasn't properly adjusted. She couldn't hear her instructor. So her first few lessons were not very good because I just think she was just totally disorientated by it. And but, they her, just, but her emotional realm, was so turbulent at that stage. It's almost a reflection of, of the fact that this is a bit wonky too. So she pushes on through, is that? Well, she just persists. She's very persistent. And clearly there was something there that gelled very early on. And then she starts studying engineering as well. So she's there working in the hangar. And again, this resistance from the male community. But she, she cuts quite a figure, you know, because she'd sort of dyed her hair at this point. And she was obviously regarded as, as uh, a slightly, perhaps there was even a hint of vulgarity there. I'd, I'd always seen Amy actually as, as rather sort of modest and quite demure, but to read some accounts of her, they thought she was quite brash. Who wrote them? Well, these, this was the men at the Aero Club in Stag Lane. Right, well, they're, were, but they're not going to give her a great press, are no, they? No, they're not, of course not. So they were making judgments about her based on her appearance, and they sort of said she was angry, and she was angry. You know, she just, she'd just been dropped, betrayed, you know, it was a terrible humiliation, but she was also heartbroken. But she finds aviation, so even sort of, even though she's not very good, she's just, she's now made this her thing, you know, and she's, so she stuck with it, she, she sort of carried on for another 18 months, and then she announced that she was going to try and break the world record and fly to Australia. From? From the UK, from the UK, from Croydon to Darwin. How many flying hours does she have under her belt when she announced this? She has less than 100 hours solo in her logbook. That's quite the thing, isn't it? I mean, insofar as these men might have depicted her as vulgar, 
a better description is pretty courageous. There's very few people who do that with so little, uh, so few hours on the logbook. Well, you see, even that was arguably an act of of defiance. Defiance, and, and perhaps, you know, I don't. You see, my theory is that. People say, did she have a death wish? Or she wasn't going to kill herself, but I think she took the view if she did kill herself, it didn't matter. And I say that because I think she'd already been through a kind of death in this experience. So something, she'd lost something really vital to her life and, and she never found it, actually. She never found it. So it was part of the tragedy of, of, of her youth and, of course, ultimately her death. How does that emotional realm and, and, and her story in, in that sense, not the flying, but the, the sort of the, the, the prelude, if you like, to, the, to flying, how does that fit with you and your life? Her, that particular crisis in her life resonates with me, but that something similar, not dissimilar, happened to me, you know, at a much later stage in my life, when I was 50, you know. I, you know, here I am twice Amy's age, you know, this is when she was 25, 26, when she really started flying. She was, she was 26, 27 when she set off for Australia. But she already regarded herself as almost, a, not a failure exactly, but she was struggling to find purpose in her life. So the one great thing that she wanted had fallen apart. And her, her, the next sister down, Irene, who had married, had a lovely home, there was a bit of sibling rivalry there, Nine months before Amy sets off on her flight, Irene commits suicide. No. <laughs> and, I, and that's what I mean, when you, you think of that whole emotional backdrop and what really was going through Amy's mind, there's no record of it. The family had that sort of stiff upper lip. It was never discussed. Mm -hmm.